A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Oh, so welcome to the Highlands of Scotland, and this is Glen Affric, and it's fairly epic. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you again and well I'm in this amazing silver birch sort of enclave of trees covered in mosses and the reason I'm here is today um, we've come from Glencoe where the weather was forecast to be cloud down to 200 meters so we wouldn't be able to see the peaks. So when it's conditions like that, it's very overcast, there's not going to be a lot of light it's good to have subjects that you can create depth with and obviously trees are perfect subjects for that and this is called Glen Afric and it is quite incredible I've never been here before it's somewhere that I've wanted to go for so long and I think we're going to get some amazing shots here so what I want to do is talk about in this video um, taking shots in sort of flatter light really we might get some amazing light but I think the light is going to be fairly overcast and flat this is spectacular First of all, I'm going to take a shot of what you can see now, because why not? Look at this, this looks amazing. So, as you can see here, there's so many amazing Caledonian pines like this. These have been cut back massively over hundreds of years in Scotland, but Glen Affric is a place where they still exist and they are so amazing. They're, they're like a photographer's dream. So what I'm gonna try and do, first of all, you can see it's very, very cloudy. I'm gonna try and get a little bit higher. So I'm gonna to go to high ground, see if I can find some lone trees and then set them off against the, the background, uh, maybe the background mountains over there. And then we'll try and get some more intimate shots, the bark, and then hopefully we'll be able to shoot this incredible river as well. What a place! <laughs> Okay, it's always good to get a start for 10. That's probably not a start for 10. Is that a thing in the US? I think that might be in a UK game show. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's always good to get an image just to get yourself going, I find. And this is quite a nice image. I've got this beautiful sort of Caledonian pine here on the right-hand side, this one in the middle, and then a really tall one here that goes out of the top of the frame. I'm not too bothered about it going out of the top of the frame. That's fine. And then in the background, they've got this sort of snow-capped mountain. Now, it's very cloudy, it's very overcast, that's the type of conditions that we're shooting in, but um, I still feel like this has got a little bit of depth to it. It would be nice if there was just a little bit more detail in the cloud up here. I'm definitely going to crop off this side here and then probably just crop off a little bit here. It's probably going to be a more of a 4-3 ratio. But yeah, this is, this is going to work. I'm going to exposure bracket it um, just to get a little bit more dynamic range. There's no wind, which is fantastic. And what's not to love here? It's just a beautiful, beautiful location. <laughs> Look at this bark that I've just found here on this, I presume this is just a really old Caledonian pine, but it's so deep. Um, if you were a rock climber, you could climb up this, I reckon, or a tree climber. But yeah, anyway, there we go. Continue. Oh my word, this is spectacular. 
we've got a little bit of light, but I don't think there's going to be much light coming out because the sun's quite low. Um, the, the plan is to hike up just a little bit higher and then try and pick out some of the trees. But there's also an amazing mountain there. It, oh, this is just, look at the trees, they're incredible. <laughs> Okay, the rain's coming down a little bit now, but there was some amazing light just before. I was going up there and it just felt like I was getting into a little bit of wilderness that didn't have as many trees. I want to, there to be more trees around that I can pick compositions out from. And then when I was up there, I saw a hill just over there that looked a little bit clearer and it's closer to the lake and closer to the mountain. So I think I'm gonna head back down and then back up a hill just over the other side of these trees. Hopefully that's gonna work. Let's see. Okay, we're nearly at the top of that little hill now, but I've just spotted these trees. There's a little bit of light, still fairly overcast. Um, but what I'm trying to do is separate elements and these trees are very well separated from the background because just of the atmosphere and the fact that, you know, we've got, got these clouds, the sort of, base of clouds above is creating that nice soft light and then there's a little bit of light coming through which you can see just there it's gone behind the hill a little bit but that's reflecting off the clouds and creating a little bit of warm light on the trees so you can see here that i've got these two trees and then i've just got a bit of reflection of the lake down there i might even open it up a little bit and just go a bit wider and crop it and make a little bit of a pano it's not the most amazing shot but i think it demonstrates just having that separation that you need to do when you're shooting things like this and you've got more overcast conditions. Hopefully when we get a bit higher, we might see a bit of light come through, but I think we'll be able to spot some other, maybe long lens shots and get something really good. Ah, <sighs> right, up to the top. Okay, so I've just been trying to find a composition for the tree here, this lone tree. There's one up there, which I'll show you in a minute. But what I'm trying to do is, you know, because it's quite overcast, there's not, the light's not amazing, although the light is getting better. So it just proves that you should get out whatever, but, but it's not amazing. So I'm trying to use the form of this tree and interweave it with the background um, scene, really. So I'm just trying to think where I'm going to place the individual branches of this tree in the scene and I found if I get quite low there it's quite a good shot um, there's an island that sort of points out and I've got to be a little bit careful about that it looks so good so yeah I'm going to set up down here without falling down the mountain and um, so we can get It's changed a little bit. Uh, we got a lot more blue sky, and um, so now I'm, I'm sort of trying to use the light a little bit more, if I'm honest. So we've got some really nice light in the valley, a little bit of rain coming through. That's sort of the distant subject. And then I've just thought about arranging these Caledonian pines. There's a dead one here, which I feel like works well because it, because if you sort of think of a square sort of down here, this area here is quite dark. So this tree gives a lot of contrast against this mountain up here and this diagonal that's sort of through in this direction opposes this diagonal in this direction, which leads to the amazing weather in the distance. I think it's a really nice shot. I, I think we just need a little bit more light reflecting down into the scene a little bit just to give the trees a little bit more punch. But I think it's gonna be good. I'm going to expose your um, bracket here. The other thing to say is that I've gone up to ISO 400 because the wind's blowing quite a lot and I want to catch um, the branches, you know, stop them moving. And ISO 400 is fine. Um, ideally, you shoot at ISO 64, but ISO 400 will be totally fine. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now.
Right, well, the light's not changed massively, but I think it's probably warmed up a little bit. And certainly down the valley there, it looks really good. There's a nice little pano here where we've got these trees on the left-hand side sort of anchoring that side, the mountains anchoring the right-hand side, funneling you in to the valley down there. And I think that's going to make a good pano. So basically what I've done is I've got it at around about sort of 40 mil. I've fixed focus at F11, just somewhere down there. Everything's in focus anyway. And I'm basically going to just take three exposures at each position and then just move. It's gone very overcast again now. There's a little bit of colour in the sky, but what a good thing to do and look out for is just a tree that's just a silhouette, um, which is these two little, little trees here together. In fact, I think there's three. You can't quite see the, the third. Um, and then I've just got those positioned to the left-hand side of the mountain, which actually there's a little bit of light coming through. So I better get the shot now um, just to catch this bit of light. But Having that silhouette allows you to create a bit of um, form, and that's what you want to do when, the flat, when there's flat light. You need to create, you know, use shapes and textures and things to help um, define depth in, in the image. So this should be pretty good. I'm gonna take this, I think, and then head down and see what else we can find before it goes dark. So I hope you enjoyed that. What an amazing location Glen Affric is. And obviously that makes photography so much easier. So you can't get away from the fact that in dull conditions and you, if you're in a pretty amazing location, then um, you're gonna get some better shots. I think it's important though, when you are in dull conditions like that, that you choose your location. You'll see next week why that's the case. <laughs> um, because having trees, made a big difference because that gave us the form, the shape. Also allowed us to do a little bit more things with depth as well because um, you can, you know, you, you can have trees at various different depths and, and you, can, you can use the size of those as well as the shape of those to create more of a 3D image, which is ultimately what you're trying to do when you've got those flat conditions. I mean, we did get the conditions a little bit better and I've got some prints to show you because I, I really like these photos. I, I thought they worked really well and you know how much I like printing. I get asked a lot of time what paper I use for printing. Well, this is photo speed paper. I think you can get it in the US now. I'll put a link in the description. I use the NST bright white paper, which is this one, and the cotton etching, which is the next one. I'll show you a bit of a close up of these as, as I go through them. Okay, so first to this one of this really old silver birch here and the, the um, lichen, lichen, don't know which way to say it, on the, on the branches here and just the silver and green of, of this shot was just so nice. The background's important in this because um, you know, it's a very uniform, it's the side of a hill, um, so there's no lines going through it distracting. I actually, I think it's about 68 millimeters this and I used F10, but even you know, just back here, there's things out of focus, but that doesn't really matter because the plane of focus where this tree is works really well. And again, flat conditions, perfect for this. Um, you know, I, don't, I actually think even a little bit of light wouldn't really help this very much, even reflected light, because I just like it in flat conditions and, and just enjoying the form of it, otherwise it'd get too complicated. So that's that shot. So this shot's an interesting one because I think, um, what, what I did in this shot, and I talked about it in, in the video, was chopped off this tree on the left-hand side, and I did a landscape and a portrait version. The portrait version's better. I really like this broken sort of branch here, which at first I wasn't sure about, but I think it's worked really well. I've added this, kept this fern in here, which I think looks good. 
and then this tree just anchors this right hand side and then we've got the um, mountain which is just appearing you can just see it in the background and again these super flat conditions there's hardly any detail in the sky but it works really because you know there's a lot of form in this image and a lot of texture form and texture is so important in flat conditions you know whether you've got a foreground rock or you know just a distance to the mountains you know made it a, um, a little bit less obvious in the background as well as it being smaller so you get a little bit of an idea of depth as well um, onto this one so this was again similar to the last one really I'm just using the texture of these trees in the foreground the texture of the bar was just so so beautiful and then the sky starts to be a bit more interesting now I didn't get any light though so there's no light on the land and actually I think it works again you know just thinking about the composition or where this island um, or this peninsula comes out I think it's important and then just um, yeah it just it just works really well you've just got to be really careful with where you place your trees and make sure there's not any any weird crossovers um, but I really like that I think there's a lot of depth to that image and then this one which is probably one of my favorites actually was right at the end of the day just again just simplifying the scene using form and shapes when there's not a lot of light I mean again I did have a little bit of light coming through here but um, yeah, this, this paper looks fantastic, by the way. I don't know if you can see it up on, on that camera angle, if I just angle it like that. But it's got such a nice texture to it. I really, really like it. Um, so this is the cotton etching. And um, yeah, this looks fantastic. This was shot on my 24 to 70 millimeter F 2.8, which is the sharpest lens I've got. Um, so, you know, I talked about that last week, but the, the 24 to 200 is not the sharpest. The 24 to 120 is sharp and the 24 to 70 is super sharp the difference is tiny between them it's not massive but it's enough to you know want to shoot this if i can so because people ask why i had those three lenses but yeah if i can take that lens you know i take all my lenses if i could but it's just carrying them i am not a mule okay so onto this final shot which i wanted to show you which i didn't show in the video but um, i've printed it a little bit smaller it's not the best shot in the world but it does show that you can do something a little bit different as well in flat light. Flat light here, I've just used this dead tree, not worried about the top of it, let, let it go through the scene to give, to give an idea of depth as, again. Because if I, if I had the top of it, then I'd have to have a wide angle and I think I'd get too much in. But just by cropping off the top and going a bit tighter, has just used the form and I can, again, I've got the texture of this dead, dead bark. So there's some top tips. I hope they're useful for shooting when it's cloudy. Obviously having an amazing location like this helps massively. So I wanted to thank this week's sponsor, which is Squarespace. <laughs> Back to Squarespace again. Thanks ever so much, Squarespace. So if you need a website or a domain, then you can head over to squarespace.com and, 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 and check them out. Um, what I've done was, because I took quite a lot of images here, is I put the images in a blog which as you can see here, I built with Squarespace. And that allows you to build um, a web page, or in this case, a blog, really, really simply. You can, you can build a blog or a store, or you can just build individual pages. But you don't need any technical skills, and that's the key. It's super, super easy to do. So if you're looking to build a website for your photography, maybe you're setting up your business, then make sure you head over to squarespace.com and go to forward slash Nigel, or use offer code Nigel for 10% off. Okay. Until next Sunday, bye.